Hi everyone, I'm going to cover the um, design process that I followed and the process that you're going to follow when you edit your content in the newsletter. So I've designed this template, which you can see in front of you. And when you mouse over these, uh, these are just blocks that I've stacked. When you mouse over them, you can edit them. So for now, we're going to edit this title and you'll see enter title. So I'm going to edit some text there. And then every time you change something, you hit save. And then go back. You always click the square, little square icon with a pencil in it because that's the edit. Um, that's the edit function. So you can see that when I type, it changes it, and you can preview the changes um, as they happen. I'm just going to edit or add some text there. This is just some dummy text and when you're done with that you can click save and you can edit uh, for example this is quite interesting because this is an image and text item so you'll see that there's a drag option so you can drag it as big as you want as long as you make sure that your image fits these um, dimensions that it gives you 309 pixels by 232 pixels so when you design an image or when you insert an image, you, it's recommended that that's the size that you use. And adding images that are too big uh, to this email newsletter will make your newsletter a bit big and the likelihood that it will bounce back or get or not be delivered is slightly higher. So if we want to edit this one, insert some text here and you can Right, with some spacing and then you can you'll see that there's every icon every image that looks like this is an image placeholder and there will be if you send it with an, without having an image inserted it will appear blank so there'll be nothing um, not recommended so if we browse images it'll click if you actually I just want to show you that again if you click here browse it will bring up this section so that you can import images from your computer you can import images from a website so if you click upload image it will bring up your windows uh, file manager and you will go to your li image library where you library where you keep images and then you can upload them as normal as you would to any other like facebook for example and and you can also import from URL. That means if you know where the image is stored online, then you can add the URL there. But it's more likely that you'll be uploading an image from your computer. And then that will appear there. Then what I recommend doing is having one. I can make a, a duplicate. What I'm going to do is make a duplicate of this um, so that if you want to send, for example, if different people are sending emails, then you just have one template that you can alter and the same signature at the bottom that you can keep for the person who's sending it. So if it's me sending it, or for example, marketing manager, and my email is Melissa at Fox, and I'll leave it just there, and then it will populate the details that I've input there, there, and a photograph as well. So if I want to add here, I suggest doing, you know, including a photograph of your face, always great. And it will also, this will also increase some, the personality factor, I guess, the, um, the connection between the person reading the email and the person who's sending the email get you know increasing the personal connection with your your clients which is always great in any kind of marketing and specifically email marketing where you're going to be in someone's inbox and it's nice to know where you know who that email comes from and not just a faceless um a company you know a, br a brand it's nice to know that it's coming from an actual person it's obvious that every email is sent from a person but it's always nice to be reminded that there is a person 
you know, who, who cares about the relationship. And this email is a way of nurturing that relationship. So I want to save those details and it, you know, it will save them there. So as soon as you are done designing, um, and you're happy with your content and you realize, oh, I need to add another image or I need to add more text or I need to add a button or you're running a special about um, on, a, on a specific product and that image or that special has a countdown, it's going to expire. What you do, you want to add, well, basically what I'm saying is you'd like to add more modules. So you're going to, for example, if you'd like to add a product that you're running a special on, you click and drag here where my mouse is and then you add usually above, this is the, the, what I've designed as the footer area, um, basically the address and some share and tweet and some forward button, and then links to Vanguard and basically an instruction to follow on social media. And then the signature, everything that you're adding is going to be above this signature. Is That's what I recommend and that's how I've designed it. So if you'd like to, for example, include products, You'll go to your, um, you'll add the photograph of the product here by doing the same thing, clicking browse. And then you'll, if there's a specific place on your website where this information about this product can be seen, you add this link in the link box here. Then subtitle, um, product one, right? You'll call it the name of the product there. And the price, for example, you'll probably always be selling in Rand, so it's a thousand Rand, right? And then your button, you can change it to uh, learn more. For example, you don't want, or you might not be running an e-commerce site or a place where people can go and buy directly. So in your case, your call to action or the action that you want people to take by clicking on this button is learn more. It's always important to have the instructions on the button be very clear. So if people click a button that says shop now, you would expect to be taken to a shop, uh, a place where you can buy something, put something in your cart and then check out. This is not the case I expect with um, Vanguard's operations. So you'll be able to direct people to a page where they can learn more about a product. And now you've edited that one, that was column one. And then if you want to go to column two, you include a, you add a different picture by uploading it, include a link, subtitle, this is product, oopsie, product two, and then your price is for example, 2000 Rand and um, no more. Then every, every time you obviously change something, you click save. So say you want to add a countdown timer that these are specials that's going, that are going to be running. Um, what I would also do is include um, so you include that align saver, you include that this product is going to be, and you can change the font size as well. Um, your special offers are going to be available for a limited time, and that's only on these two products. What you can then do is add a countdown timer there and you can write that these offers expire in so to get that timer to count down you choose an expiration date so say you are sending it out on the 31st of january but it expires the 7th of february and then you choose 7 february from your calendar and then you click a time so say you want it to be at 4 p.m this works on a 24 hour clock so 1600 Right, you choose, this is the expiry time that you choose at 16, at four, basically four o'clock in the afternoon. Then what the countdown timer will do is count down backwards from right now until the 7th of February at four o'clock. So then you click save and this will keep counting down. And when a person opens, when the recipient opens the email, they will see the amount of time left until the, t the date and time you've chosen. So that's the, the content, basically any of these boxes, this works as you've seen on a drag and drop system. So what I've done, that's a divider, that's a title, that's text. You can include buttons, uh, images, a gallery of thing or a gallery of images, a video, if you'd like, um, 
and this is quite flexible you can if you decide that you don't like the order of items here what you can also do is click and drag by mousing over this icon here and then drag it around so say that the special offers are the first thing you want people to see and then you want to include for example news from your company this all looks like one section now so to divide your email between you know section your email up basically what i would suggest is a divider it's a very subtle touch but in any kind of design the more subtle touches help users navigate the information and as the person who's putting together this newsletter you are essentially designing information and you want to design information in a way that is easy for your recipient to read and navigate and understand so having your small design touches like orange um i've chosen orange buttons that'll be you know orange for every email that you send um it gives people it grabs attention because obviously the rest of the email is you know white and gray and black as soon as you add images here obviously that will change but the orange is one of your brand colors is an attention grabbing color and it gives people something to look at and to grab and it gives you know people's eyes a place to rest so I've chosen, you know, orange, one of your oranges from your brand color palette. Um, so what basically the point of what I was saying is if you want to divide your newsletter up, it's a good idea to use dividers and to create one or two sections per email newsletter. So for example, a nice uh, banner image, that can let's see that's at the top so a nice banner image um and then a title some text some information about for example news from the company or special offers that you know information on special offers that you're running or campaigns that you're running information that you, if you are disseminating useful information for example fire safety information this would go here and then your promotion further down the email, unless you are sending out a quick email blast. And the point of the email is basically to get people uh, to buy. And then what I would recommend is a nice um, hello and welcome message, or you can even change this to latest special offers and then wipe this out, delete the special offers button because you've already written Basically, you've written our latest special offers, and then you can delete the text, delete this, and delete the divider because you're telling people, okay, this is the intention of this email is to get people to buy, and these are our latest products, and these are the latest our specials, for example. And then people are not expecting huge amounts of copy in an email that is directly the point of which is to sell um, products. So that gives you a basic overview of the design features of MailerLite. And in our next video, I'm going to talk about what you do as soon as you're done editing and you say you're happy with all of the content that's in this email.